So, the day we've all been waiting for is finally here. The Mandalorian Season 2 Episode 1 has finally been released on Disney+, Plus, and with it we finally got to see a character that so many of us have been waiting for for such a long time. So, I'm going to break down everything that went down in the episode, and how it connects to the other Star Wars TV series and films. So before we get into it, make sure you absolutely force crush the subscribe button for more awesome Mandalorian Season 2 content. To start off the episode, we get a massive recap of all the major events from the first season of the show, just to bring us back up to speed with everything that went down. Following this, however, we are thrown straight onto the dry, sandy world which we saw in the trailer, with Din Djarin strolling the dark streets with the child by his side. As he is strolling, you can also see creepy red eyes glowing in the dark corners of the street, a very awesome touch for Halloween. Following this, Din Djarin enters a very dodgy back alley building, passing a Twi'lek bouncer, to meet the man we already saw in the trailer, Gore Koresh. I'm also pretty sure you can see Zuvio from The Force Awakens inside the cantina, but I could be wrong about that one. He's also the same species as Embo, a Kyuzo, so I really do believe that we'll see Embo make an appearance somewhere in the show. Inside, the two sit down to watch two Gamorrean fighters ferociously battling to the death, while Mando attempts to extract information about a Mandalorian contact of his. Of course, the Gamorrean species were first introduced in Return of the Jedi, where they were used as guards in Jabba's palace, before Luke Skywalker viciously choked them with the Force. Unfortunately, Gore Koresh isn't too keen to hand the Mando any information about his contact, instead turning all of his henchmen on him in hopes of stealing the shiny Beskar armor right off of his back. Mando is of course having none of this, swiftly kicking Baby Yoda's capsule away from the danger, as he activates his Mandalorian whistling birds to brutally kill each of the henchmen. Following that, Gore Koresh rushes out of the building in fear, before Mando quickly catches up to him and hangs him from a light pole, demanding to know the information. Koresh of course quickly cracks under the pressure, and reveals that his Mandalorian contact is in fact in the city of Mos Pelgo, or Freetown as it is now called. By the way, I predicted this exact city in my prediction video yesterday, so you guys should definitely check that out if you want to see how much I got right. After the Mando leaves Gore Koresh to be viciously devoured by the red-eyed creatures while hanging from the light pole, he quickly sets off to the desert world of Tatooine, where we get a nice reappearance from the lady who repaired the Razor Crest last season, Peli Motto. We also, of course, again see the pit droids from the Phantom Menace, which did appear last season. Immediately after this, Mando asks for the map to Mos Pelgo, to which the lovely lady calls over R5-D4, who you might remember was the droid that had a bad motivator in A New Hope. R5 quickly pulls up the map, before Din Djarin locates Mos Pelgo, and quickly hops on his speeder bike, rushing through the sandy dunes of Tatooine. Eventually, the Mando reaches a cantina, and demands that the Weequay bartender give him information about the local Mandalorian. The man who then walks into the cantina is named Cobb Vanth, from the Aftermath series of novels. Cobb Vanth is of course wearing the infamous armour of the prestigious bounty hunter Boba Fett, which is now acid scorched and damaged from his fall into the Sarlacc pit during Return of the Jedi. This is consistent with the Aftermath novels, where Cobb Vanth was already heavily implied to have the armour of Boba Fett. For those of you who don't know, Cobb Vanth was a former slave on the planet Tatooine, who had a deep, star-shaped scar carved into the skin of his back as a symbol of ownership from his slave owners. He was of course introduced in the Star Wars Aftermath novels as a self-proclaimed lawman of Mos Pelgo, which is kept pretty consistent with this episode. Din Djarin is of course furious at Cobb Vanth for wearing Mandalorian armour without being an actual Mandalorian, sparking a western standoff between the two. Unfortunately however, a crate dragon ravages the town of Mos Pelgo before they can fight, leading the two to team up to fight it back and protect the town. A huge crate dragon skeleton is of course also seen in A New Hope, and the scream that Obi-Wan does when he appears to Luke is actually supposed to be an imitation of the crate dragon roar. As the two rush through the dunes of Tatooine on their bikes, you may have noticed that the engine from Anakin's pod racer in The Phantom Menace is powering Cobb Vanth's bike. How cool is that? While this is happening, we can see an incredible flashback scene from the time just after the destruction of the second Death Star, where the Red Key Raiders crime syndicate, who pretended to be miners, raided the town of Mos Pelgo immediately after the Empire was forced to leave the planet. This is of course covered in the Aftermath novels also. The Red Key Raiders brutally slaughtered the people of Mos Pelgo, but Cobb Vanth was lucky enough to escape with a container full of Silicax Oxalate crystals, selling them to the Jawas inside of the Sandcrawler, in return for the armour of Boba Fett after it was recovered from the Sarlacc. In the Aftermath novel, there was also another man from the Red Key Raiders crime syndicate in the Sandcrawler with Cobb Vanth, who Vanth had to shoot in order to keep the armour, but I guess that may have been changed around for this episode. Cobb Vanth and the Mandalorian then rally the citizens of Mos Pelgo together, helping them to load up the blast charges ready to take the crate dragon on at its own cave. 
Awesomely, the Tuscan raiders agree to no longer attack the village and become a peaceful neighbour to the citizens of Mos Pelgo in return for their help with the killing of the Great Dragon. I think it's awesome to see the nicer side of the Tuscan raiders, which we haven't really got a good look at before this. Also during the team up, we get a huge reference to Attack of the Clones and the Clone Wars TV series with the massive species who are reptilians that were tamed and used by the Tusken Raiders. You could also see them while Anakin was slaughtering not just the men, but the women and the children too. So cool to see that. Immediately following that, the Tuskens lure the massive crate beast from its cave, allowing the group to impale the dragon with their lines. Cobb Vanth gets incredibly impatient and wants to blow the creature up, but Mando warns him that it is still too far inside of its cave to make an impact. Awesomely, we also get to see Boba's rangefinder in action, with Cobb Vanth targeting his missile towards the Crate Dragon with a rush of energy. The Mos Pelgo citizens then continue flinging a barrage of objects at the beast, further luring it out of the cave, just in time for the Mando to put a massive and unexpected plan into action. Mando hits Boba's jetpack with a strong clank, sending Cobb Vanth angrily flying into the air. I'm sure you guys all know the last time we saw that happen. Of course, Mando doesn't have the time to explain the plan, but this leaves him alone with the Bantha loaded with blast charges. Din Djarin is then forced to hold the Bantha down with the explosives as the Krayt Dragon rushes towards him, putting him in incredible danger. The Krayt Dragon actually eats Mando, leaving Baby Yoda and the rest of the group incredibly worried and upset for a short moment. But he soon after bursts out of its mouth again before detonating the blast charges inside. This action of course shreds the creature to pieces, sending the meat of the Krayt Dragon tumbling to the floor with the entire Mos Pelgo group and Cobb Vanth celebrating in relief. Keeping their agreement from earlier, Cobb Vanth agrees to hand back Boba Fett's armor to the Mando, and they actually both tell each other that they hope their paths can cross again very soon. This is so awesome and probably means that Cobb Vanth will eventually make a return in the show and maybe even become a true Mandalorian near the end of the season and possibly even join Clan Mudhorn. Following that, we get an awesome reference to the Crate Dragon Pearl, which for those of you who don't know, can actually be used in place of a Kyber Crystal to power a lightsaber. These Krayt Dragon Pearls produce a lightsaber blade which is much, much stronger than the standard Kyber blade, so it's pretty incredible to see and a nice throwback. If you've played the Knights of the Old Republic games, you'll know all about these Krayt Dragon Pearls. Now to end the episode, we get the shot that the whole fanbase was waiting for. We see a dark robed figure facing the twin sons of Tatooine with a scarred up, bold head. As he turns around, we get the reveal that everyone could see coming, but is absolutely incredible. Boba Fett himself has been camped on Tatooine for all of these years and is now back with a vengeance, probably attempting to reclaim his armor. Personally, I think this is the beginning of a two-part episode where we will probably see Boba Fett appear again in the next episode. I definitely think Boba will be facing off with Din Djarin to either reclaim the armor or maybe they even team up to face another outside threat. Let me know what you think down below. So that was a full recap plus explainer on The Mandalorian Season 2 Episode 1. Thanks so much for watching, really hope you enjoyed the video. Remember to subscribe to be notified as soon as I release my breakdown for Episode 2 next week. Cheers guys, hope to see you in the next one.